Hi, Ken and Susan. My name is Katherine Dunn. I'm here to discuss with you the financial plan that I've put together for you. So thank you very much for sending over the material, your goals, expectations um, for the future so that we can start working together and putting together a comprehensive plan to revisit on an annual basis um, to help you meet your goals and live out um, retirement and comfort as well as um, some additional things that you've highlighted for me, such as making sure that you have the most income tax savings as possible, and funding your children's education. So before we get started, I wanted to ask, what questions do you have for me? Great. I can absolutely cover that today. So, Susan, you had called me and you had expressed some concern around Tom requesting information about the rental property um, that you have due to it maybe potentially not being as advantageous um, for him to know all of the details. And I want to ensure you that um, I am overseen by a board of professionals for conduct and specifically there are several principles that I have to abide by um, and under those rules of conduct um, section 2.1 um, it states that I shall not communicate directly or indirectly any client specific information or prospects um, that are false or misleading in any way so um, your information is going to be secure and it is confidential that I do not mislead any parties about potential benefits um, to the service that I do provide. Um, I cannot disclose or otherwise omit any facts um, that could be avoided or misleading for you. Um, so my number one goal is you as my clients. The other portion that I want to share with you is section 3.1, and that states that I shall not um, share any information that is confidential except for that is required um, for a proper legal process, and that is necessitated by obligations of my employer or partners, and that is required to defend against charges of wrongdoing or in connection with civil dispute or any need to perform services. So hopefully that instills some confidence um, and some trust around the financial planning process. I know that you're new to this, so I want you to feel comfortable and at any time ask me questions um, that arise. So the other question that you had for me was with regard to your education savings goals. And you have quite a few decisions to make around your retirement goals. And that is really going to determine where you land as far as being able to fund the education of your three children. So raw data and facts I want to review with you so that you have all of the information possible to make the appropriate decision. So you let me know that university is around $23,000 a year. You're expecting that to increase about 6% per year. Um, your expected return on investment is about 7%. So your three beautiful children, Brentley, Bradley, and Beth, being able to have their education fully funded um, at the ages currently of 10, 5, and 2 years old, um, you have a window of time before they turn 18 and need to start drawing on those funds. So we did a calculation around the amount expected based on um, an infl inflation adjusted uh, formula to take into account what it's going to look like in the future for payments. So for Brentley, per year, you're going to have to save $14,093 so that he can take out for the next four years, starting in 2023, um, the amount of money needed to cover tuition expense. For Bradley, it's $9,607, and for Beth, it's $8,264. So I know that probably sounds like a substantial amount of money. And when I had referenced earlier about your retirement goals, um, it's really going to be for meeting your educational goals of putting any additional discretionary income that you have in savings towards those educational goals. So how do you make your money work best for you? Um, you need to consider some of the 
tax savings plans that they have for education. And I've detailed them in the plan for you to review further, um, but those are things such as your custodial accounts, your UGMAs, your UTMAs, a Coverdale Education Savings Account, or a 529. So there are additional things to fund education, such as loans, grants, um, and potentially scholarships. But what I'm recommending is that for each of the children, you open up a 529. And that's because contribution limits are pretty high. They're around um, $100,000 to $150,000 a year. Um, and they are tax-free for earnings that are withdrawn for education and expenses specifically. So hopefully for today that covers your questions around your education savings goals. I look forward to meeting with you again and discussing further um, additional portions of your plan. Again, reach out at any time with any questions that you have. Thank you.